Good morning and welcome uh, in the module 3 aerodynamics in blast furnace part 2 and uh, in this lecture I will discuss about the channeling. In the last lecture I have discussed about uh, uh, there is the pressure drop how to estimate the pressure drop in a blast furnace using argon equation. Basically the argon equation gives you a very um, Argon equation is very well known equation in a packed bed reactor to estimate the pressure drop and it is also used for calculating the pressure drop in blast furnace and argon equation correlates the different uh, um, packed bed parameters like uh, your void edge and then velocity particle diameter uh, with the pressure drop. So, you can easily see the effect of this parameter on the pressure drop and also you can get an average pressure drop in the blast furnace. And we have shown that uh, gas voidage has a very significant effect on the pressure drop, very sensitive uh, that is the pressure drop is very sensitive on the gas voidage. A slight increase in the gas voidage can decrease in pressure drop by 3 to 5 times that is only 0.1 increase in the pressure drop uh, voidage can uh, increase the pressure drop by 3 to 5 times and especially at lower voidage. And particle size also have an effect when the particle size is very less, less than 5 millimeter then also uh, the heat mass transfer and the flow resistance become very, very high. That is the very uh, resistance become very high. Okay. And also we have shown that is the effect of mixed weight on the pressure drop. Now, this pressure drop basically gives an average estimate of the pressure drop in the blast furnace. But actually if you want to know the health of the blast furnace or health of the gas flow, uh, gas flow inside the blast furnace, instantaneous health of the blast furnace, then it is better to know the radial and the axial distribution of the pressure in the blast furnace. And nowadays different underbedded burden probes are available using which you can calculate the instantaneous and local pressure inside the brass furnace and that is very helpful. Basically, if I know somewhere the local pressure drop is high, we have to take some action, right. So anyway, let us understand how this, the two major irregularities in the blast furnace, one is called the channeling, another is the flooding. Flooding I will discuss in the next lecture. In this lecture, I will concentrate on the channeling. And channeling is basically take place uh, when the gas passes through some selected channels uh, through the solid bed and then the gas is not utilized properly because it does not interact with the most of the solid and it only pass through a uh, channels and that too at a very high velocity uh, with a very low residence time. So the gas solid interaction become very less and the gas is not utilized, thermal and chemical potential of the blast furnace gas is not utilized at all. As a result, you do not get the proper productivity and everything is hampered. So, first of all, these are the concepts that will be cleared. At one thing is the bed instability and the fluidization and then what is the mechanism of channeling and also the height of pressure as a remedy for the channeling. These are the basic concepts that will cover. Now, condition of incipient fluidization. Now fluidization, what is this? Basically blast furnace is a packed bed, but if you have fines, then some of the fines can get fluidized. When the fluidization takes place, that is called the, uh, there is the condition of incipient fluidization. Basically what happens if you increase the gas flow rate through a packed bed, the pressure drop increases because more and more gas velocity, the frictional, uh, that is the distribution become more and as a result your pressure drop increases. And this pressure drop go on increasing and ultimately point come when the pressure drop across the bed just become equal to the apparent weight of the bed. This is the pressure drop and it is the apparent weight of the bed. Basically the first term if you see 1 minus epsilon gives you the volume of the solid per unit volume of the bed. Basically volume of the solid multiplied by rho s into g gives you the weight of the bed and 1 minus epsilon rho g into g gives you the buoyancy. 
So, as a result, this basically gives you the apparent weight of the bed suspended in a gaseous medium, right. So, when these two terms become equal, that is called the condition of incipient fluidization, and then the velocity, okay, then pressure drop again. This pressure drop, you know, pressure drop across the bed is a function of gas velocity through the bed, then the void edge and diameter of the particle, all this parameter. Now, also the pressure drop also depends on the size shape distribution of the particle very much. And so, it becomes very, very complicated uh, expression of pressure drop and it has been found when and you uh, through their experiment they shown there is a shape factor of the particle and the voidage can be nicely correlated and there is the exist an universal correlation at the condition of incipient fluidization. So, that makes the life very easy. Since there is an uh, universal correlation basically the voidage and shape factor is equal to some constant okay, under, uh, under incipient fluidization it has been found. So, if you can put that value then you can get a very simple expression for the Reynolds number at the condition of incipient fluidization and is given by this where J, G A is called the Galileo number, it is a function of particle diameter, density of solid and density of gas and then viscosity of the gas like this. And Reynolds number obviously, as you know, it is the rho density of the gas, velocity, particle diameter and the viscosity of the gas. So, only this parameter is known, if you know, then you can calculate the minimum velocity for fluidization. Anyway, so this is the transport phenomenon you can get into the book of Geiger Poirier and next. Uh, so, now here I have shown you a monogram basically this monogram you can find that if I want to produce a certain amount of uh, that is the output that is if I want to produce this is the uh, unit of productivity it is given ton hot metal per meter square per day and it is for a good furnace this productivity uh, of the order of 70 is a very good. So, now we are showing a point that is at 50 when the productivity is 50 in terms of ton hot metal per meter square per hour per day and when it is 50 because this is the productivity suppose the furnace is producing at 50 ton hot metal per meter square per day then what will be the blast volume required at a particular coke rate because as I shown you there is the productivity is simply uh, Q by K where Q is the Mm, carbon throughput divided by the k is the coke rate. So, if I know the coke rate and if I know the productivity, I know what is the carbon throughput that is the rate at which you are burning the carbon and correspondingly you can know what will be the required blast volume. So, this is the blast volume required at 550 coke rate and your productivity is 50 meter square per day. This is the blast volume and this blast volume corresponds to a linear velocity. Okay. This blast volume, this is basically normal meter cube per meter square per hour and multiplied by 100 actually you can see it is basically 2500 normal meter cube per meter square per second, but this is not the actually linear velocity through the bed. This is basically the superficial gas velocity. Actual velocity under this volume when you this much of blast volume is going per unit time per meter square then the actual linear velocity if you calculate inside the bed it will be around 4. Okay. And under a gauge pressure this is also you can see under different top pressure because the in the blast furnace you can operate under different uh, top pressure because now with this bell less charging and also bell charging also bell less charging you have an option to restrict the gas inside the furnace and you can create a pressure at the top as you want. Okay. So, when the gauge pressure is 0 in this line that means your top pressure is 1 atmospheric pressure only there is no excess. For example, 0.5 means that is you have a top pressure of 1.5 atmosphere this is 1 means 1.1 because this is the gauge pressure. So, anyway, so when I do not use any top pressure that is the top height of pressure then my linear velocity of the gas through the blast furnace is 4 and that in this diagram you can see this is the, so all you can see dotted line these are for the these are this will give you the critical gas velocity okay and this dotted line basically gives you that is for the ore 
ore that is the density is uh, 5 gram per centimeter cube and solid lignite for the coal which is 1 gram per centimeter cube the density okay, for this thing. You can understand solid line is for the coal and dotted line is for the uh, your ore and this 4 uh, velocity meter per this is the meter per second 4 meter per second this corresponds to critical gas velocity for ore at 0 gauge pressure okay, that 0 gauge top pressure uh, then you can find this is around the particle diameter of the order of 6 millimeter. So, it shows that is 6 millimeter particle will be fluidized that is they will be blown away from the furnace ok. So, under a 550 coke rate and your productivity of 50 normal uh, meter square per hour if you use then the 6 millimeter ore particle will be blown away from the system. Similarly, if I see the if I see the coke particle and coke particle around 13, you can see here it is 13. So, 13 millimeter coke particle will be blown away. So, that is the thing. So, for productivity of 50 to 10 hot metal per meter square per day without hot top pressure, that is when the gauge hot top pressure, this gauge pressure is 0 at the top, the wood size below 6 millimeter and coke size below 23 millimeter will be blown out from the system. So, this fluidization if we calculate this is called the bed instability that is the fines are likely to be blown away from the system if you do not control the gas velocity through the blast furnace this is very important. So, productivity when you want to increase the productivity obviously the blast rate increases at the same time you have to keep in mind whether this velocity the relay velocity through the blast furnace will blown away some fines or not that have to be keep into mind. So, this is after that I will go for the channeling. So, this you understand that is from this diagram for example, for, for all gauge pressure you have these lines are there. So, if top pressure is 0 0.5 and accordingly you can get if you have increase obviously if you increase the top pressure obviously uh, the particles of 6 millimeter will not blown off at that time obviously because you have a top pressure you have a restriction velocity will decrease. If you increase the top pressure then the pressure drop will decrease the velocity linear velocity inside the blast furnace will also decrease ok. So, this monogram shows you at at which top pressure at which productivity coke rate and top pressure what are the size of the ore particle and coke particle that will be blown away from the system this monogram will gives you ok fine. Next let us go to the this is the channeling now let us come to the channeling. Now, why the channeling take place that is the mechanism of channeling uh, I would like to say and before that as I said the channel channeling is a phenomena when the gas find some selected least resistance path and move away from the system. Now, how this thing happen ok. Uh, blast furnace charge has non uniformity very important you must remember that the blast furnace charge has non uniformity non uniformity both with respect to size shape density and their distribution. It is not that uniform size particle with uniform density across the cross section it is not rather it is just different. So, it is a very complex solid distribution in the blast furnace. So, local variation of pressure is evident. So, that is why the critical gas velocity may be exceeded locally because there may be some region where the fines are there and fines is usually basically when there are fines there is the resistance to gas flow also very high as a result the pressure drop will be very high. So, if the critical and in those cases since the pressure drop will if we just go on increasing the blast velocity or the linear velocity in the blast furnace then time may come when the critical velocity may be ex exceeded locally at that location for those particles for the fine particles. So, then what will happen lighter particles are blown off in this region. So, then lighter particle the coke particle even the ore particles are little denser but if the size is less as I said depending on the size also they also can be fluidized usually the coke particles are very prone to fluidized from the bed because they are very light and some lighter there is the coke fines basically lighter particles means means the fine lighter particles it is not the big coke particle that will blown off that I shown you that is the thing but fine fine lighter 
particles are blown off from this region, there is a finer and lighter, it is basically minded not only the any size, smaller size, that depends on and deposited in the regions of low velocity. And what happens you have, I will just show you by some picture next uh, year, uh, next slide that is you have some ore particles and then in between some coke particles are they will blown off then what will happen the ore particle will consolidate it, consolidate each other because as the fines goes away the heavy ore particle will come together and it will consolidate. So, this is called the ore shift I will come to that and the fines that is blown off then then piles again will come and sit over those into uh, uh, there is the near neighboring regions. As a result what happens? that is the ever phenomena contributes to the compactness of the less permeable region further. There is the less permeable region was there when the fines goes off and the ore get consolidated and then again the fines come back and returns and sit on them. So, it becomes more uneven and pressure drop become more uneven. In that case what happens is that the gas cannot flow through that region, it becomes very impervious, the gas would not be able to flow and it will find a path of least resistance. And that uh, basically gas then flows through a system of distinct channel okay, called the channeling and restoring again if you want to restore the blast rate to previous value not a solution because history is so once challenging take place you cannot immediately cannot make an rectification just by lowering the blast rate because this is the history is phenomenon because once happened you cannot do. So, you have to take precaution. Now, let us see the channeling mechanism you can understand from there better because what I said is that suppose I have a burden distribution is like this, it is the stock profile, it is similar to you can see this is a it is called the M stock profile because it goes like this and the other half also again it goes and then come. So, it comes a, it is called the M profile. Now, this is a one stock profile you have seen the V stock profile, V stock profile just come like this and then this. So, it is a M profile anyway you can find a reach just in between the wall and the center line okay in between somewhere this ridge is there ridge is basically a place where basically the fine accumulates because the fines wherever you charge the material the fines cannot move too much of distance uh, so they are become sticky and they try to uh, sit on the place where they uh, they are charged because they cannot move the fines do not have much mobility move and the ore particle denser particle like ore also will come to that thing. So, when there is a reach there is a likely chance that is the fines are accumulated there ok. So, somewhere the reach has to be there in the V profile the reach is there at the near the wall in the M profile it is away from the wall such that you can give the passage for the gas through the wall as well as through the center anyway. So, here in this location what you can find there is a fine accumulation is there. So, because the fine accumulation what type of uh, pressure profile we will expect this is, the, this is the pressure drop profile. You can see the pressure drop is low near the wall periphery and then it is increasing and pressure drop is local pressure drop is maximum near the ridge and then the pressure drop again decrease towards the center. Because the center is more permeable because more kakpo particles are there and uh, similarly here also because the coke particle roll down. So, coke particles are here and here, here also some coke are there basically mostly the ore will be there because ore cannot move too much of distances I will come to that thing because they are sticky and heavier especially the fines. Anyway, so this region basically less permeable than what happens here the pressure drop is high and if you increase the gas velocity the pressure drop will further go up. So, in that case is situation may arise when the local pressure drop at this location may exceeds the critical gas velocity for fluidization of these fines whatever is there mostly the coal fines or the ore fines that is the they may exceed the critical velocity for those fines and then the fines can fluidized. If the fines fluidized means here the this particle will move up like this it is fluidized it will move up in the layer and as a result what happened these are the ore particles were there ore ore and then these are the ores are very ore particles are heavy. So, this ore uh, may come closer together because the fines has been now so far the fines was restricted them they are separated. Now, since the fines goes up this ore particle will come together and that is called the consolidation like this ore may come like this and over this fine can deposit. Okay. So, 
So, you can see this picture that the when the gas velocity has increased and the fluidization has taken place. After fluidization, this is the local fluidization, this is the situation, the ore particle has been consolidated in this region, ore particle has been consolidated. So, this region now become totally impervious to the gas. Then what will happen? The gas from this region will move this way or it will move this way, some channels because this region has been totally impervious to the gas. So, pressure drop will not increase anymore because the gas has find a path this way or that way. So, gas pressure here will not be very high now because it will move away because the through the path of least resistance. So, now the gas will pass this way and this way and the pressure drop will be this low and there the pressure drop will not be no more this is this flatter and then this will be like this because here the gas will find a path to the path of least resistance. So, it will move away. So, this is the one of the mechanism I am telling for the channeling and it is nicely described in the book of Ekevisha. So, you can go through it. Okay. Now, what are the indications? There is a, if the channeling take place, what are the indication? You can find there is a furnace, furnace takes air without increase in the pressure drop. Furnace takes air without increase in pressure drop is not increasing. If you see the average pressure drop in the blast furnace, it is not increasing. Because whatever the gas are coming, they have found a path of least resistance. There is no friction, the very less friction because the, through the path, they are moving through this path where there are fines and woods are there and where the less permeability is not moving at all through the less permeable region. So, pressure drop is not increasing and high exit gas temperature, you can immediately find the exit gas temperature is quite high because gas potential is not being utilized. So, gas is moving away through the atmosphere that is the it is coming out of the blast furnace at a very high temperature because the, whatever the gas uh, heat content that has not been exchanged with the solid very effectively. So, and then high CO CO2 ratio similarly the chemical potential of the gas has not been utilized CO has not been utilized properly because of lack of gas solid interaction. So, CO in the exit gas will be quite high, high fluid dust emission because of fluidization fluid dust emission will be there and you will have also obviously, the coke rate will increase because you are not utilizing the gas properly as a result you have to give more and more coke. So, these are some of the indication when this happening and immediately you have to take the corrective action. What are the how do you take the corrective action is that there is the argon equation provides the average pressure drop is clarified that I said this is not the thing what are the corrective action this is the average pressure drop is not sufficient as I am telling we need to have near local distribution of the pressure radially and axially to monitor the actual health or instantaneous gas distribution in the furnace. That is very important because if we know that at a particular location the pressure drop is increasing, local pressure drop is increasing, immediately what we will do? We have to change our burden distribution. In that location, that location has to be made more permeable. So, in the next skip when the furnace is moving, those location you have to charge some say coke particle you can charge because coke are more permeable. Okay. So, and ore should not be charged in that location, it had to be charged little away from it because the ore basically try to stick, ore, ore does not move too much where they are uh, basically deposited because the angle of deposit is very high as we will see later on. Okay. Because uh, and the fines and the ore do not move, fines specially that do not move at all, where they fall they try to stick there, but the ore moves, but the movement is not that much. Okay. So, and the coke basically roll down to side. So, that way you have to make the uh, basically the charging you have to check. So, as I said under burden probes are there through his local distribution you see and then you make the uh, charge, charge distribution you make. Also, you can improve the burden quality. So, you can change the burden quality such that the fines are not generated during their descent through the blast furnace because of impact and abrasion. So, 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 so we can feed the burden with more strength as I said and that generates the fines. So, these are the corrective action that you can do. Okay, in this slide, we will discuss the height of pressure as a remedy for channeling. As you have said that uh, if channeling is going to take place into the blast furnace, you have some indication from the exit gas. So, the as we have discussed in the previ uh, there is the previous slide that your height temperature will increase and then uh, 
you will find that CO gas concentration can increase okay. and also uh, the pressure drop will not change in spite of that is that the end actually when the challenging has taken place those will take place. But if you see that is the exit gas temperature is start increasing or the CO contained into the exit gas increasing that means that is an indication of channeling is going to start. So, in that case you can take some corrective action like high top pressure. Now, high top pressure means at the top of the blast furnace you can have some high pressure. How you can do that? Basically, you can restrict the gas, outgoing gas. Uh, today it is possible by well discharging, it is possible that you restrict the gas flow out from the furnace. So, you can maintain some little high pressure at the top and then that is called the high top pressure. And if you take a high top pressure, what happens? The pressure drop in the blast furnace decreases because you are increasing P1 minus P2. Okay. So, P1 is the bottom pressure, P2 is the top pressure. If you increase the P2, then the pressure drop decreases. So, if you want to increase the blast rate to suppose to increase the productivity, then obviously your P1 increases. And then if you increase the P2 also, then you can maintain a uh, pressure drop reasonable. Okay. So, you, your pressure drop will remain constant, but at the same time you can push some more amount of the air blast to increase the productivity. So, in that case that is the way if you increase the pressure drop, uh, you, if you want to if you increase the high top pressure, you can maintain the pressure drop even at high blast rate okay, constant. Uh, at a high blast rate you can maintain the pressure drop constant as a result you can maintain the furnace without going for channeling. Okay. So, let us see some quantitative calculation how you can do that. Suppose the furnace is operating with the top and bottom pressure as 1.1 and 2.5 atmosphere respectively. That is the top pressure is 1.1 atmosphere and the bottom pressure is 2.5 atmosphere. It is when the furnace is running very uh, nicely without any channeling with the nice gas distribution it is running. Now, you intend to blow 30 percent more blast to enhance the coke burning rate and the productivity. So, if you want to increase the productivity, you have to increase the blast rate obviously, such that you can burn more coke per unit time, more iron per unit time. So, if you want to increase the blast rate by 30 percent, then obviously, the bottom pressure will increase because you are pushing more air blast into the at the bottom of the furnace. So, obviously, the bottom pressure will increase, it will shoot up. As a result, your pressure drop inside the furnace will increase, but I do not want that. I want to pressure drop keep constant by increasing the top pressure. So, that is the thing if I want to keep the pressure drop constant and what will be uh, pressure drop constant, what will be the top pressure, high top pressure. So, okay. so, this is the thing that is I want to produce more, I want to give 30 percent extra air blast into the blast furnace and I do not want to increase the pressure drop, then what will be my top pressure. So, this calculation you can do. So, that I will just demonstrate. So, this is the argon equation you know delta P by H, this is the relation we had. Now, we can write this equation in a differential form as I am taking the P, I am taking this uh, P on the left hand side. So, it becomes P d P by d H is equal to k t w uh, w naught to the bar n, where basically um, we have kept the other parameter constant that is the bed property have kept it constant. And if you consider the temperature is also constant, then it will be simply a constant time that is the uh, w naught to the bar n, w naught is the superficial gas velocity. So, how there is the superficial gas velocity or the blast rate, you can say blast rate and the pressure you can correlate by this equation P d P by d H is equal to k into w naught n square okay, to the uh, that is to the power n basically. So, this is the system basically your why it is so because the pressure is increasing and the H is increasing from the top to the bottom and also pressure is increasing from the your bottom to the top that is the thing. So, P d P that is why we dh. Basically, h is increasing from top to bottom, h is 0 at the top and at the bottom the height is h, capital H. So, okay, h is increasing, maximum height is h. Okay. So, p d p dh is equal to k t and t is constant is k into w naught to the power n. So, exponent in the in case of the uh, your argon equation it is 2, but n not necessarily be has to be 2. 
it has been found in the blast furnace if exponent is 1.75 then it is the best condition. So, this is the thing that is as I say the argon equation I convert it to this P d P d h is equal to k w naught to the power n and then if I integrate this simply we will get p b square minus p d square by 2 is equal to k h into w naught to the power n ok. And then I can rearrange this term and basically p b plus p t by 2 is the average pressure and p b minus p t is the pressure drop that should be equal to k prime some constant time w naught to the power n and this n value is basically 1.75. Now, simply we can write now in the two case are there one case is the normal operating condition another is the with 30 percent extra air blast. So, if we do that, but our pressure drop will remain constant. So, for two, two conditions I have two equation p v 1 delta p is equal to k prime w naught 1 to the power 1.75 and the in other case there is the average pressure in condition 2 plus pre, pre into pressure drop that is constant pressure drop in case 1 and 2 is not changing and that is k prime w naught 2 to the power 1.75. If I take a ratio then I can take that is the p average 2 to p average 1 is 1 1.3 times of 1.75 right. So, then p average 2 you can calculate simply from this formula where the p average 1 initial condition what was the top pressure? Top pressure was 2.5 and the nah, top pressure was 1.1 and bottom pressure was 2.5. So, average pressure was 2.5 plus 1.1 by 2 that is 1.8. So, that average pressure into 1.58 it gives 2.85 and you can define this average pressure that way and from there p v 2 plus p t 2 is 5.69 and the pressure drop how much because pressure drop does not change. So, initially it was 2.5 minus 1.1 that is 1.4 in case 2 also pressure drop remain constant that is 1.4 just simply if you solve it then you can get that is the bottom pressure is 3.55 and the top pressure 2.15. So, what does this mean basically if I want to increase the blast rate okay, by 30 percent. So, in that case my top pressure has to be increased from 1.1 atmosphere to 2.15 atmosphere such that the pressure drop does not change that pressure drop remains at 1.4 ok. So, thus uh, that is the thing that is you can calculate also how much top pressure is required uh, to maintain the pressure drop constant even at higher blast rate. So, this is the calculation through which I have shown. Now, so, this is the book that is equivocious and the what are the conclusion now. So, we have found that channeling is a phenomena when gas passes through some selected gas channels of least resistance without much participating into the mass exchange with the solid that we have said already. And the channeling as I said is caused by the local fine segregation. If you have local fine segregation and the shooting up of the local pressure drop and then fluidization and then the consolidation of the ore particles that is called the ore shift and then again deposition, deposition of the fine particle that has been fluidized again they will revert back. So, they will revert back when the velocity basically there is a uh, when the fluidization has taken place ok all the fines has gone up then again the solid will come and then it will consolidate it that is called the ore shift and subsequently your all the fines again will come and sit on there. So, what happens the location um, which was very impervious now it becomes more impervious because of uh, solid segregation that is the solid consolidation and also the fine deposition again over that. And the other regions on the contrary become much more permeable. So, this is the reason basically. And the underburden probes monitoring the local pressure evolution are required to monitor the instantaneous gas distribution or instantaneous health of the blast furnace and subsequent corrective action through the burden distribution or the height of pressure you can take that thing. But once channeling has taken place then it is very difficult to revive to the initial condition. So, when the you get some indication of the channeling. So, by internal pressure drop measurement or by the exit gas temperature and the CO concentration and the under burden probes that gives you the pressure distribution. Once you get and some indication of channeling is going to take place immediately 
we can take some corrective action through burden distribution or height of pressure and then the channeling can be restricted. Okay, this is uh, much for this lecture. We next lecture we will talk about the flooding in the blast furnace.